Hey everyone, today I'm going to build a brand new Next.js application using Next.js 13's new app directory. If you haven't had a chance to play around with it yet, this is a great time to get a quick overview of the features and why it's so awesome. We're going to talk about two killer things, server components and what they unlock, and the new layouts and how to use them in the app directory. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to do is run yarn create next app. And this has been updated to include a prompt for the app directory. So we can just give this an exam. Let's call it example app. We want to use TypeScript, ESLint. We don't need the source directory. And of course, we're going to enable the experimental app directory. It's still in beta, so you can expect a couple of rough edges. But if you're building something and it doesn't need to be production ready, I would highly suggest taking a look at this at least because it's going to unlock so many cool features. So. We're going to then jump into the example app and we're going to run yarn dev, which will start up the dev server. And then over here, we're going to make sure we're in the right directory and launch VS code. So you're going to see a lot of things that are very familiar to you. You have the public directory, which still has all the static files and everything you need. You have your configuration, which has app directory enabled to true. And then you also have um, your TypeScript configurations as well. In the pages directory, you'll notice that the only folder is the API folder. Everything else, all the pages themselves, have been moved to the app directory. I imagine at one point in the future, the API routes will also be moved, but for right now, they're figuring it out. Which leaves us the app directory. This is where all the magic happens. So let's go ahead and fire up our simple browser so we can kind of see what exactly is going on um, in VS Code itself. So here we are running on localhost and it's going to show in a second um, what exactly the default app looks like. So this all comes from the app directory. So let's go ahead and take a look at what these files are and then what some of the really cool things are we can do with it. The most fundamental part of the app directory is that all of the pages now of your application are all a page file, literally named page. It can be a JSX or TSX extension. Um, you can also use JS and TS if you're configured that way, but it has to be named page, which means you can no longer have routes that are just named like blog or just named user or whatever might be. If you want to nest your URLs, you're going to have to use the folder and then put the page inside that. And we'll explore that uh, at another time. So here's them just kind of building out their basic page for what um, this looks like. You have a module.css file which contains it and you can import that straight into here. And then they also have a global CSS file which has a bunch of um, styles that they have applied for this. And those are going to be imported into this new layout file. So you have the page which defines the page and then the layout file defines the layout for all children in that directory and child directories. This means you can build nested layouts by having layout files deeper in the folder hierarchy, which means you can have a root layout which defines sort of your global application. You can then have a layout inside that which might have a top nav. And then for pages that all need a similar side navigation, you can have a nested layout which builds that side navigation. The only par uh, property that the root layout is going to take is the children and it passes it through to render what those children are. And then the rest of this is going to be syntax that you want common to all of the pages that are its descendants. So this is the root layout, which means it has HTML head and body tags. And then children layout, they, might, they don't need those and they might have totally different stuff as well. Lastly, there's a head file, which includes the various pieces of head and metadata that you're gonna wanna have. So that's kind of how the app directory structure is laid out. You have head files to say like what the title of the page is. You have the layout, which defines a layout for all the children that are descendants of that layout, and of course the root layout. And then all of your pages have to be pages. So this is very similar 
to how the pages directory works with a couple of tweaks for how to do it, right? You have this new layout concept, you, they broke out the head as well, but there's really no fundamental differences. You can do a lot of these similar things in the old pages directory. What the new app directory also unlocks are server components. So let's go ahead and see exactly kind of what that means. A server component is a component, just a React component, that is rendered only on the server. In Next.js 12 and in the pages directory, previous versions, all the components might be rendered on the server or they might be rendered on the client. For the first render, often for the server side render, um, or if you're doing static generation, that would be a client, that would be a server, sorry, server side render only. But then after that, the component will be rendered on the client, which means your components need to function well in both environments. Now, with server components, you can write components that are only supposed to ever run on the server, which means you unlock a new class of possibilities. These components can read files from the file store. They can access databases directly. They can use environment variables to query protected APIs in the backend. And it also means because they're rendered on the server, they return a promise of a component, not just a component. So let's go ahead and actually write one of these so you can kind of see what we mean. It's gonna be a very basic component, but it should give you a feel for what it is. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all of this CSS because we don't want it to kind of confuse what exactly we're doing. Then we're going to go ahead and select um, all the text and just make a brand new, very basic home component. So this is gonna be hello, and if we save it, it's gonna show up over here. It just says hello, nothing exciting. Then we can create my component. And this is going to be a server component. And so we can make it an asynchronous function and it's going to return hello server. It's going to return something that will be from the server. And so now we can get rid of this and just do my component and fire it off. Now you'll see that it works, but it also has an error. This is because TypeScript doesn't understand that you can return a promise of JSX. So if you're using TypeScript, you're going to have to just ignore these for a little bit. There's a bug where they're working on fixing that. So this is a server component, but now we can actually really, really, really kind of unlock the power of what this means. So I'm going to start a terminal session here and we're just going to create a temporary file. It's going to say, hello world. We're going to drop it into temp hello. And if we cat that temp hello, you'll see it says hello world has quotes and everything. Very exciting. Now, what we're going to do is in our component, we're actually going to go ahead and read in the temporary file from the server. And then it's going to be streamed to the client when it's rendered, and it's going to show up in our browser. So we're going to import, call it read file um, from FS promises because we like working with promises. And then we're going to const data. We're going to await because we can, the read file, and pass in that temporary temp hello.txt, and make sure the encoding here is uh, UTF-8 so we can easily read it. And then instead of saying hello server, we're just gonna change this to be the data itself. So it's gonna read this out, and then it's going to return it, and then we're going to render it right here and you can see that it says, hello world, quotes and all, in our browser. And so this enables you to really tackle a whole new swath of problems. Now what you can't do in a server component is you can't have state and you can't have interaction. So you can't do on click handlers and you can't use React hooks for use state because these are rendered once on the server and then streamed to the client when they're being rendered. And so you, you'll need to break those apart from server components and client components. We'll get into that a little bit later, but this just gives you a brief overview of some of the great power unlocked in Next.js 13. So there you have it. 
we have the new app directory, which functions similar to the pages directory. You have the old pages slash API as well. And now with the app directory, you can use server components for rendering information on the server. And you'll need to use client components for anything that's interactive on the client. So go ahead and start up a project. I have a one liner for how you can actually execute and start this project um, in the description below. And if you like what you see, go ahead and leave a comment or subscribe. Thanks.